Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And about four years ago or so, I did a video about Plex Photos. And this feature of Plex allows you to add your own personal photo library to your personal media server and share it with yourself or friends and family all over the world, just like you can with other media. But I haven't updated the video since then because there was nothing new to talk about, but that changes today because there is now a standalone Photos app for photos that are stored inside of your Plex media server. And this is part of a new long-term strategy for Plex to have the main Plex app just be TVs and movies with music and photos in their own separate apps. And of course, we've looked a lot over the years at the awesome Plex Amp music player, which is where music is living for many Plex users now. And they're hoping to do something similar here with photos. Now, what you're going to see today is a very beta app. It just came out the other day. You can download this on your iPhone or Android phone right now. It doesn't have much in the way of features just yet, but what they're doing is putting this out there and then asking the community to give them some feedback as to what features they would like to see added. And I've got some ideas of my own as well. So we're going to take a quick look at the app here. We'll also, at the end of the video, look at some of the Plex roadmap discussions that are up on their forums right now, and we'll dive a little bit deeper into all of it. Now, before we get into this video, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and take a look at how Plex Photos works. Now, if you're curious as to how to set up Plex Photos on your server, I did a video a couple of years ago about doing just that. The process is still the same today as it was then. It's pretty easy to get up and running. And just for context, what I have on my Plex server is this folder that's on my NAS device, and I point my Plex media server at it. And in that folder, I've got a bunch of images, as you can see here, but I also have video files here too, because Plex can index both images and videos and put them into your photo albums. Additionally, Plex can index raw files like this NEF file from my Nikon camera. So you've got a lot of options here for what you can index inside of your personal photo library. And although they do give you the option for personal videos, I found that if you are taking videos along with your photos, it's nice to put them in a photo album versus something separate. So that's kind of the context about how my system is set up. And now when we look at the app, hopefully this will make sense. So when you load up the new Plex Photos app, uh, you will be brought to this recommended screen here. And again, it's going to look very Spartan because this is very early days. I'm playing with this the first day it became available publicly. And when I pop in here, I've got my recently added photos visible here. And this is some imagery from the tour of the Space Shuttle Discovery that I went on a number of years ago here, which was pretty cool. And then below that, I've got my recently favorited photos. And these are photos that I added a heart to, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then what Plex has done here is it's indexed some photos from the 1990s that might be in different folders, but it put them all into one spot here. So I've got some cool photos of my visit to the Las Vegas Hilton when they used to have the Star Trek thing there, which was awesome. And then it also has some other pictures of that time period, like my uh, laptop here, if I can find it. Uh, my laptop from 1998 when I was a senior in college. Pretty cool stuff here, and it's all uh, in a recommended library. Now, if you want to connect to a different photo server, you can just tap up here to select it, and what it will do is give you access to any Plex photo library that's attached to your account. So every server that has a photo library should appear here, and if you have multiple photo libraries, you can just switch between them on here. So you can see here my MyCloud PR2100 only has one photo library, but if I had multiples, you would see them here along with the other servers. You can also switch your account by tapping on your account name up here. Now let's take a look at the timeline. And this is an area where I think we could see some improvement hopefully over time, because right now it just gives you uh, everything sorted by each individual date that you have in your library. And this I could see getting very difficult to navigate if you've got a lot of photos. So as you can see here, I've got photos from December 7th, 2016. This is a, on a Disney World visit that I have. And then I've got a specific date here in October, another specific date here in October. And this can go on for quite a while. So hopefully we see some improvements to the timeline section here. But this does give you all of your photos uh, sorted sequentially. 
and the data that it uses for determining the date of these photos comes from the photo's metadata, not from the file name. So all of these space shuttle pictures here I just added to my library today, but it correctly put June 21st, 2011 in there because that was the date that I was down in Florida crawling around inside of the space shuttle, which again was a very fun thing to do. Now you'll also notice here that my videos are nicely integrated with it all as well. So for example, we can go uh, over to, maybe we'll do this one here, and I can just click play, and you can see that video here playing now uh, from my server. So pretty nice to have all that stuff together here, uh, which is pretty handy. And you can also jump through your videos that way. It's still a little clunky insofar as playing things back, but again, we are in the early beta stages here. The next area is where I think you'll probably be doing most of your navigation. This is the library folder. And so what I've got here is basically just a raw look at how things are configured in my file system. So as you can recall, uh, we had a bunch of files on the root of that folder, followed by folders containing different albums. And that's exactly what we see here. So we've got all the loose photos here. And then if I jump into Space Shuttle Tour, for example, I've got this basically looking like an album. So as far as organization is concerned now, if you did want to organize photos a little better, uh, you've got to put them in individual folders on the server. But you've got some filtering options here. So for example, I can jump up to my filter thing and I could decide, you know what, I only want to see cam uh, images that I shot on my Nikon D600. So I can select that and only the D600 photos will show up. Likewise, I can go over to my D7000 and get the same uh, thing happening here. So you do have some a degree of filtering that you can do here. You can also change how they're sorted. And again, hopefully we'll see more features over time, and that's why they are soliciting all this feedback. Now one more note on organization. It is possible to have nested folders here. So let's take a look again at our library. If I go into my Hawaii trip here, you can see that all the photos in the root of the Hawaii trip are there. And then if I go into this folder called test that I created, I've got even more underneath it. So you do have some nesting here of photo albums that you can do through the file system and that will translate over to the app. Now at the moment you cannot upload any photos or change any of the metadata from the app. The only thing you really can do at this point is favorite an image. So for example this picture here was scanned in 2017 but it's actually from like 1987. This is my Apple IIc and my collection of floppy disks there. Now I can favorite this and that will be reflected on my server. So if I pop back onto my computer later, this will be in my favorites, but that's about all I can do with this image. I can pull up the metadata here, but I can't edit the date. Uh, I can just look at it. So hopefully over time, we'll have the ability to do some organization and some uploads from the app here. But at the moment, it is pretty much limited to just viewing what you already have on the server. Now in the video description, you'll see two important links. The first one here is for feedback on this new Photos app. And I am on day one here when I'm shooting this video. And as you can see, there's already a lot of discussion that's been generated about this. So as you're playing with this app, if there are things that you would like for them to add or change or adjust, definitely let them know there. You can certainly comment here, but they're going to see it in the forum. So join that discussion and you may find that others have already uh, agreed with what you would like to see added to it and the Plex team will be actively engaging over there. Another important post here involves the future of the Plex media server. We might want to dedicate a video to this in the near future. And what they're committing to here is the continued development of the Plex AMP app, which we've already covered immensely here on the channel, but also now this new Photos app. And they are going to continue to support both of these through dedicated apps. So they will be continuing to develop this Photos app further and hopefully make it uh, something on par with what we've seen with Plex AMP as things roll forward. But they're also talking about adding an API layer to the server that's not in place at the moment. And the hope is, is that they can add more features more frequently on the server side. Because if they don't have to develop a client interface for every single thing that they can do with the server, they may start putting more resources into server development and then having the development community out there, if you're a programmer, maybe one of you, uh, develop some client applications that hook into the server to provide specific kinds of 
user interfaces. I'm thinking about audiobooks in particular as a great example of something that could really benefit from that API. So take a look at this post because it is something that is very important, I think, to the future of the Plex Media Server community. And they are not uh, backing away from supporting the server, but I think they want to approach it in a very different way, starting with pulling music and photos out of the main Plex client app and having separate apps for that. But again, also developing this public open API for other apps to connect to the server. And certainly Plex is a very easy self-hosted app to get up and running. And if these APIs can provide more robust features more quickly, I think that might be a good thing, but it is a change. And I know change can be often difficult to discuss. So I think we're gonna come back to this topic in the future. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but again, just like the music app, uh, there is a very robust discussion beginning here on the Plex forums on this post, and both of these will be linked down below in the video description. So go ahead and download that Photos app, start playing with it. If you're like me, you might not have really touched photos in a while, so this might be a good way to reacquaint yourself with the feature. And let me know what you thought down in the comments below, but definitely head over to those forum posts as well to share your thoughts with the Plex team and other members of the Plex community. That'll do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.